Hey everybody, how are you? It's Peter again for MLB Trade Rumors and Discussions. It is Sunday, February 16, 2020. Keeping this going every single day for the rest of the year, just like I promised you guys. So, today is the day that I want to talk about, which I think changed the Diamondbacks franchise last year, which was a huge thing and a move that nobody really seen coming and no one really knew who this guy was except for most people in Miami. So, I want to talk about Zach Gallen today, and this is why, as a Diamondback fan, I'm so excited. And who is Zach Gallen, right? So last year, the Diamondbacks made a shocking move by trading their number one shortstop at the time and maybe number one prospect in Chisholm for Zach Gallen. Now, who is Zach Gallen? Okay, Zach Gallen. All he did in the minors was pitch with an ERA of under three. He started out in 2017, right? And I wrote these numbers down for you guys just to let you know what kind of pitcher he is because he's not, uh, throw, he doesn't throw 99 miles an hour. He's just a brilliant hit the corners type pitcher. And the, the most impressive thing about this man is he don't get rattled. So let me read some numbers for you, okay? In 2017, he pitched to a 10 and 8 with a 2.9 ERA in the minors, okay? In 2018, moving on to AAA for a full year, he, he went back a little bit. He pitched 8 and 9 with a 3.6 ERA. But this is where, for me, things get so interesting. He came back in 2019, and he pitched to a 9 and 1 with a 1.7 ERA. So what does that show you, right? He makes adjustments, and you see it in his game when he pitches. Even if he goes down or there's men on base or he messes up, he somehow gets out of it. He don't get rattled, and he knows how to fix it, which is why... He went to, so for example, in 2019, after he did that 9-1, he went to the majors. He came up from Miami, and he pitched to a 2.7 ERA in, I believe, around seven games, if I'm correct. Got the trade, which shocked Miami fans, and it shocked everybody, to be honest with you. Dimebacks didn't need Chisholm, right? It was a good shortstop. Looked really good at one point, but the Dimebacks, again, are full of a bunch of players. They have their guy in Ahmed for a while. They have Escobar and Marte, so they can afford to make this move. But not only that... Just to get rid of one player to get this caliber pitcher, which is a brilliant move by Hazen. He went in Arizona. He pitched with a 2.8 ERA in eight games. And I've watched every single one of those games. I've watched him dominate, dominate the Padres. I've watched him dominate the Rockies. And guys like Blackman and uh, Arenado, don't get me wrong, a couple of guys will hit him hard. But the guy really went in there and started shutting guys down. Tough teams. So what I've seen from him pitching there, even when men were on base was they just, they just couldn't get good contact off this guy. And he, he was able to throw his changeup for a strike on the first. He is able to mix and match, which is great. So examining that trade for the Dimebacks was huge because the Dimebacks knew they needed an ace, right, after getting rid of Granky. They knew they are going to need an ace. But what the, the whole point to this trade was to get an up-and-coming pitcher. Excuse me. That's why they knew Robbie Ray had one more year left, right? They they made the trade for Luke Weaver, and Luke Weaver was a young kid, but he was his arm, you know, got hurt at the time. So they know they needed another pitcher. They wanted to get somebody because all their farm system, they have a couple pitchers, but not ready for a while. So that trade, it must have just fell on Hazen's apple. I don't know if he was doing research, but to get Zach Gallen for just one player was terrific. So what is Gallon going to do this year, right? That's going to be the big thing because you know he's going to crack the rotation. So even if he goes back a little bit, what I see from him is, yeah, maybe he'll go back to a three-point-something ERA, but the year after that, he's going to go back to a two-point-something ERA. He just looks like a guy who will adjust each time. And what, what excites me even more is he's going to be towards the back end of the rotation. So if that man is facing back at three number four number five starters <laughs> wonderful wonderful zach gallon will shock everybody and with the dime max hitting and the way the dimes back can jump on a number three and number four hitter especially number five and if gallon pitches the way he can watch out watch him win 16 17 games if that's the case this move is not they're not paying attention i think they just did a, a little thing on him and i believe his father was saying that uh, an airplane could come and he like can crash right near him and he'll be ready for the next pitch. I was reading that today. And it was interesting because I, not to that extent, obviously that's a, like a metaphor, but just the point is, is he is, he is that guy who doesn't get rattled. And that's what the Diamondbacks need. And that's why 
I'm excited to see guys like Bumgarner and Ray still stay because this gives guys like Gallon time to develop, right? You can't, you don't put all that pressure on him right away. You don't put all the pressure on say, all right, kid, you got to be there, be our number two. Even though to me, he will be the number two eventually. Right now, he don't need to. You got Bumgarner and Ray for that, which is wonderful. And then if Leak is going to be there, if he's going to be able to come, he would have been like a number two or a number three anyway for a veteran, which is great. And Luke Weaver, if he can stay healthy, that guy is another guy who can really pitch. But the fact that Gallon's going to be at the back end of the rotation is going to be phenomenal. So the Diamondbacks have a solid one-two punch after, um, for me, after Robbie Ray goes, if he does go. For me, it's a Bumgarner Gallon thing. To me, that'll be it. A lot of people compare Gallon to, they say Maddox and everything. I don't like comparing too much to players. You know, my favorite pitcher was Brandon Webb, and I named my son Brandon for that. And the the thing I see for Gallon is not about Maddox or no, no other pitchers. I just see the guy hit corners. I see him not get rattled. And the big thing is he can throw any pitch for a strike. That is important because that gets ahead of the hitters. And once he's ahead of hitters, you're screwed. I've watched him make really good hitters look stupid. This guy is going seven innings, eight strikeouts, yeah, even if he gets two, three runs. You got to remember, the Diamondbacks are going to have their lineup. You know, they're going to have with Starling Marte and Calhoun, all those guys to add on to this great lineup that we already had. Forget about it. It's going to be a huge thing. And if you remember last year when the Diamondbacks played the Dodgers, right? The Dodgers had some a lot of games where we were leading. Holland or Bradley blew the game. There were some crazy games in like the ninth inning. And that's, a, you know, you got to tip your hat to the Dodgers. They just come back. But if the Diamondbacks could not blow damn games... You know, not that it would have did anything with the Dodgers, but you never know how it would have been for the Arizona in the wild card. You know, those are big games. You know, you don't want to blow those games. Those are momentum swingers. You win two or three games at the Dodgers, and it changes streaks and everything. So it's very important for Gallen and Bumgarner and all these guys to be able to go in there. But the main thing is, is are they going to get rattled? And, you know, Bumgarner won't, right? So I don't see Gallen getting rattled neither. So between that and Ray, I, it's just wonderful. And I got something. Look, stay here one second. I, to show, sorry, just to show you what kind of psycho fan I am. So I'm having a daughter in about a couple of days. You know, I've had a lot of problems, pregnancy, but I got <laughs> I bought the Diamondback thing for her. You know, I'm very excited for that. So I I'm I couldn't be more excited. And at this point, I'm hoping you know next week's the season's gonna uh, spring training's gonna start. I can't wait to see how it goes. I just can't wait to see the players. And once once it hits March 1st, you know it's starting to come. It gets closer. Let me know what you guys think about Zach Gallon because I'm excited. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.